We've been wanting an outdoor table for a while now, so I finally built one that includes a bench and these awesome individual cube stools. Let me show you how I built it and welcome back to Maker Gray. I'm going to build this project in sections, starting off with the table. And quick note that I have build plans for this project on my website linked below. This whole project is gonna be made from cedar, and if you spent any time on my channel, you know that it's an excellent wood for outdoor use. I started by cutting down some four by fours, which will be the legs for the table and the bench. And then I cut down some two by fours, which I'll use to build the rest of the table base. Some of the four by fours have some pretty big knots and holes. So I'm going to fill them in with some epoxy. For this, I'm using high performance epoxy by Total Boat. And I simply poured the mixture into the holes and knots. I then quickly hit the pores with a heat gun to pop any bubbles. After letting the epoxy cure, I then sanded it to get rid of any high spots. The sanding makes it look cloudy for now, but it's gonna clear right up when I add finish later on. Next, I move back to the 2x4s that I'll use for the base of the table. I took each board and I ran them through my table saw just enough to take off the slight rounded edges. This gives me a square corner and I think it makes the wood look so much better and less like big box store lumber. Okay, and now let's build. I'm starting by building the two ends of the base of the table, joining the boards with pocket holes. My design has the legs extending all the way to the top of the table, exposed on the top and flush with the tabletop, so I need to build the base so that the tabletop and the top of the legs are level. To do this, I'm building the base upside down and using one of the tabletop boards as reference to get the correct depth for the base. And now you can see that this support is sitting at the exact depth it needs to be screwed in to the post. I added glue and joined the parts with pocket hole screws, making sure the screws are in the inside of the frame so they won't be seen. And by the way, this board between the legs, it's called an apron. You'll hear me reference it more. Then I repeated the exact same process to build the second base end. Okay, and now on to the rest of the frame. I took the two long two by fours and added pocket holes to the ends and then I set them in between the two base ends, again using a cutoff from the tabletop boards to find the right depth, and then screwed them to the legs. And now you can see the upside down base starting to take shape. Lastly, I added a two x four in the center as a center brace for support. In my outdoor lounge chair project, I added rubber feet to the bottoms of the chairs. That's worked out super well, so while this table is upside down, I'm gonna add them here too. These generally protect the bottom, but also hold the legs up off the ground and out of any possible water when it rains. The tabletop is going to be made from two by six cedar boards. I need to glue up these boards to form the top, but the edges are super rough. So I used my table saw and just barely cut off the edge, leaving it smooth and straight. Then I laid them out, making sure the nicest sides were facing up and the end grain was alternating directions to combat any twisting or warping in the future. Here, you see me lining out marks across the seams where I'll be joining the boards together. These marks are going to guide my biscuit joiner, which is just a tool that helps to keep the boards aligned during glue ups by cutting out slots in the mating edges. If you don't have this tool, you could also use dowels. You can see here how these two boards line up with slots and the oval shaped wooden disc or biscuit slides in between them for alignment. Next, I added wood glue on the edges and in the slots. And again, this is just trying to help make the joining of the edges more accurate. Before the glue up, I made some call boards, which are just flat boards with packing tape on the contact faces so that the glue squeeze out doesn't stick to them. They help to keep the table flat during glue up. Once all of the joints were together, I was able to put this tabletop into clamps and then I left it to dry overnight. That made me sweat. To attach the top, I'm gonna use these tabletop fasteners, which connect the tabletop to the base while still allowing the top to expand and contract with humidity changes. 
First, I need to cut a groove in the base. I found that my biscuit joiner is perfect for this, but you could also use a table saw or a circular saw to cut a groove in the apron before assembly. I cut into one end and then I slid the joiner down the length of the apron without letting the blade come back out of the wood, which cuts a great slot. I then repeated the process around the whole base. And here's an example of using your table saw instead. Before assembly, run your apron boards through the saw one time and you're left with a simple groove that fits the fasteners perfectly. Now, with the top glued and out of clamps, I can move it to the top of the base and prepare to connect it. First, I cut the table to length using my track saw. And again, a circular saw would be just fine here too. Then I used a square and drew out the cut lines for the legs. I cut along the lines of the squares using my track saw. And then I finished off the cuts with my jigsaw. And with all four cuts made, I can now drop the top onto the base. There's a few holes and knots on the top of the table, so I once again used my total boat epoxy and filled those up. Okay, and now let's connect the top. And you can see here how these Z clips slide into the groove and then screw into the bottom of the tabletop. Now the top is connected, but we'll be able to move with expansion and contraction as these outdoor temperatures change. For the seating on one side, I'm building a bench. I'm building something different for the other side, which I'll show you in just a minute. The bench is exactly a miniature replica of the table, so I'll just speed through this process that you've already seen. And again, don't forget that I have build plans linked below that include a cut list, material list, and step-by-step -step instructions for this whole project. For seating on the other side of the table, I thought it'd be fun to build something different and create individual cube stools. For this, I got two by eight boards and tried to cut them to length on my miter saw, but my saw isn't quite big enough and it was cutting short. So I instead cut them all with my track saw. And again, a circular saw would also work great. I want my cube stools to come together with 45 degree bevel joints on each end. So for this, I'm using a crosscut sled on my table saw. I clamped a stop block on one end so I could set my boards against it and easily make repeated cuts at the same length. These boards are so thick and I couldn't get my angled blade all the way through them. So after making the first cut, I just flipped them over to finish off the cut. Alternatively, you can also easily cut these bubbles with a miter saw or a circular saw if you'd like to cut yours with those methods instead. And if you don't want to mess with bevels, you can absolutely build these stools without them and just butt join the square edges. It would still look super cool. Okay, and now I'm gonna pair up each board and glue them up to make one wider board. And just like the tabletop, I gave one edge on each board a run through the table saw just to take off the rough edge. Then I added glue and clamped them together to dry overnight. Once they were dry and out of the clamps, I added a strip of painter's tape to each edge to try and keep them clean during the glue up from all sorts of glue squeeze out. I then added a liberal amount of glue to each side and then I set them in angle corner clamps to glue up the parts square. I personally glued up each side separately, leaving them to dry overnight, but if you feel comfortable gluing up the whole cube at once, it's definitely doable and definitely much quicker. I'm going to use this jig to add some dowels on the corners of each cube stool. This will add strength to the joints, but also add what I think is a cool design to the corners. I started by marking out where I wanted my dowels, which is an inch and a quarter in from the corners. I made a pencil mark and then I set the jig on the corner, lining it up with my mark. I then clamped the jig into place and drilled through the guide, making a perfect 45 degree hole through the joint. I worked my way all the way around and drilled holes on all eight corners of the cube. And by the way, if you're interested, I've left a link to this jig down in the description below. And now I can grab some dowels, cut them a little long, add some exterior rated wood glue, and then hammer them in. 
I added some painter's tape to help protect the surface and then I used my flush trim saw to cut them flush to the cube. I then worked my way around, adding dowels to each corner and cutting them flush. And finally, a good sanding really finishes them off. And just like on the table and bench, I'm adding rubber feet to the bottom of the stools. The last thing I need to do is add some finish to all of these parts. You know from watching my channel that I love Total Boat Finish on Cedar. And this is the same recipe I used on my outdoor shower. First, I'm adding Total Boat's Wood Sealer Varnish Primer. It fills the wood grain, seals the fibers against moisture, and it protects against the sun. Over time, cedar turns gray, but I prefer to keep mine the original color. This finish is perfect for that. I let that dry and then I applied a finish coat of Total Boat's Halcyon, which works well with the previous wood sealer. Halcyon also provides great UV protection. It dries fast and it's a clear finish. With everything together, I decided to make one alteration and add some extra support to the middle of the bench. There was no flex or bend in it, but I thought adding some middle supports would be smart as this bench can hold a few people at a time. You see that I've removed the seat top so I can drill in some pocket holes. I had some leftover 4x4s from the legs, so I cut two to length and added the same rubber feet to the bottoms. I then added a good amount of exterior wood glue, set each leg under the middle of the frame, and then I secured them to the frame with pocket screws. And with that done, this outdoor dining table is done. We've wanted an outdoor table for so long and this project did not disappoint. It's sturdy and beefy, but also has clean modern lines and the warmth of cedar, which you guys know is my favorite. This table would look great with only benches or only cube stools, but I'm so glad I went with both because I think the combo works really well. A bench is easy and sturdy, but the individual cubes give seating flexibility and mobility. I can see a cube being pulled up to our pool or next to our outdoor lounge chairs for extra seating in that area too. It's so gratifying to see this whole build in place on our back porch and I can't wait to fill it up with friends and family for some meals. Don't forget that I have build plans for the project linked below and if you'd like to see more of my outdoor or furniture projects, there's a link below for that too. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next project.